Hi, I'm Ryan. Hi, I'm Kenya. And tonight, we will be cooking a special dinner for our mothers. The menu will be New York strip steaks. And creamy as potatoes. And green beans with better than bacon jam. So the ingredients for the New York strip steak are salt, pepper, rosemary, thyme, avocado oil, and butter. And then for our creamy mashed potatoes, we will have cheese, milk, sour cream, parsley, and one stick of butter, but you can use two, and of course, our potatoes. And lastly, for the green beans, we'll have frozen green beans, better than bacon jam, and sliced almonds and craisins. Check on the potatoes. Yeah. So I will go over and check on our potatoes that have been boiling. And while he's doing that, I am going to prepare my meat. So first of all, I wash the meat with no soap, just water. And I'm going to dry the meat with paper towels. It's important that you dry the meat because water and oil don't mix and when you put it in the pot it'll create like a lot of sparks and probably burn you. So I'm drying the meat and then I'm going to wash my hands. It's important to wash your hands before and after you touch raw meat to like not spread germs. We need about almost two more minutes and they will be ready. So Kenya, okay. how do you season your meat? Um, so I'm just gonna use salt and pepper to season the meat. So I take like a pinch of salt for each side and then press it in to make sure like it's really in there. And then flip the steaks and do the same t thing to the other side. And the oven, the stove is preheated to medium so that it doesn't burn. And when you're boiling potatoes, when you're boiling potatoes, you should preheat your stove to a medium to high heat. I use mine on high heat so that way our potatoes can boil in nice hot water. All right, now that my steaks are seasoned, I'm just going to place them on the stove. First, I'm gonna put down some avocado oil so they don't stick. And rotate the pan to make sure the entire pan is covered with the oil. And then I'm gonna use tongs to place down the steaks just in case it pops. While she's doing that, that, I will be draining the boiled potatoes. Before I do that. Oh. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gregorio Armand. I'm a proud father of Kenya Armand and also serve as a middle school boys Sunday school teacher. Like. And my name is Dwayne Bacham. I'm a proud father of Ryan Bacham. And um, I'm the high school boys uh, small life group leader. And uh, today we're gonna talk about um, a couple of mothers. We're gonna talk about four mothers that you've probably heard of. Um, and we'll gonna go ahead and get right up to it. Yeah, yeah. So turn basically up, the yeah, point turn up, turn of is off. just to honor all of you mothers today. That's the whole point of today, as you can see. So we're gonna talk about qualities of some wonderful mothers, many of which are watching right now and your kids are cooking for you. And so we're gonna talk about some mothers that you may be more familiar with right off the bat. And then we're gonna go back to the kids and then we'll talk about some mothers from the word of God that you may not be as familiar about. So Dwayne's gonna kick us off with the first mother. Okay, yes, the first mother we'll talk about is, uh, well, before we get to that, we're gonna go ahead and um, pray. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, o Lord, for another day. We thank you for allowing us to come here together um, and worship your name, Lord. We ask your Lord to uh, bless the hands that prepare the, mood, the, the food and bless the mouths that are going to receive it. We ask your Lord to bless all our saints, uh, our pastors, our youth ministry, all the saints of Resurrection Baptist Church. We ask your Lord to just uh, look over everyone and continue to provide your grace and keep everyone 
um, from all hurt, harm, or danger. All these things we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And the scriptures that we're coming from for the entire event is Proverbs 31, 31. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring praise at the city gates. Okay. And Dwayne, we'll start with our first mom and qualities yes. of a great mom. Our first mother that we want to discuss is uh, Jennifer Lewis, uh, better known as uh, Miss Ruby off of Blackish. Um, she's a mother that's known for being fabulous and bold, and there's nothing that she wouldn't do for her children. Um, although she may be viewed as being a bit extra passionate, and um, sometimes she's unapologetic in the way she goes about uh, saying things, um, ultimately she wants the best for her family and her children, and those are the qualities that we like about her. The next mom and the next quality that we're talking about uh, it's like the model mom, the renaissance mom. She's almost regal. Back in the 1980s, we were introduced to a family with a mom that America just loved. Her name was Claire Huxtable from the show, The Cosby Show. Not only was she uh, very smart and she was a lawyer and she, she and her husband together had five kids, but she was able to make each one of those kids feel very special and help them along their, their uh, life's paths. Because if you watch the show, you know they had many different personalities, but she was able to hold all of that together as a wonderful mom. She was stern when she needed to be, but always in a loving manner and a loving way. If Proverbs 31 was a person, I think it would be Claire Huxtable. Yes. And we all would, and, and so if your mom is like that, make sure you turn around and say, that's you, mom. Give her a big hug and a kiss. Next mom. All right. The next mom we want to bring in to uh, play here is uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, she was known for being the first African-American first lady of the United States of America. Um, Michelle Obama led the nation um, with uh, elegance and a grace that had not been seen before. Uh, also, while she served as first lady, she also um, ran the, the, the White House. Uh, she had a couple of initiatives that she was pretty um, prevalent in as far as fitness for the youth and um, getting them up and out and in, back into exercise and whatnot. Um, while doing that, she still was very, very implement, implementary in helping President Obama uh, lead the nation with grace. So uh, like all mothers, she, she led with an elegance and grace that, that we haven't seen before. Excellent. And the next quality of a great mother is wisdom. And one of those mothers that had definitely exemplified that was before there was Barack and Michelle, there was Dr. King and Coretta Scott King that were there to help it make, make them possible. Coretta Scott King was not only the wife and the widow of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and, and the mother to their uh, four children, but she also was very instrumental in the civil rights movement. She was one of the mothers the first lady of the civil rights movement. Dr. King, because they had a family and kids, really didn't want her very involved uh, because of safety issues, but she said, no, I'm not taking the, the, the back uh, part of this and I'm not just gonna be a supporter, I can be up front too. Especially after he passed, she was definitely instrumental in the Poor People's uh, Campaign and many different campaigns, which led to things such as the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So very wise, active, so, and she put herself on the line for all of us so we could have many advantages and we could have rights that we have now today. And it's still going on, but mothers like her are still out there leading organizations and leading uh, many different things and still taking care of family. So what we'll do now is we'll take it back to the kids because it's not about us, it's about them and those wonderful cooking skills. All right, well, I just took off my boiled potatoes from the stove and I want to give you a quick tip when you're boiling potatoes it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes especially if you want them nice and tender the way you can test that is if they poke through I can't even pick it up <laughs> all right well now what I'm about to do is I'm going to add the butter to them And while I'm doing the butter, Kenya, how are those steaks? The steaks are really good. So they have about a minute left, and I cooked those on medium. So, and time is up for the steaks. 
So right now I'm just gonna flip the steaks and cook them for another five minutes. All right, they're not ready right now, so we're gonna cook them for another two minutes on that side. So tell us, what qualities do you admire most about your mother? Um, I admire... Repeat it. The qualities I admire most about my mother are her patience, especially when she's dealing with me and my whole cooking thing because she has three kids and it's, I know it's like a lot for her but she never shows it. She's always loving. And Ryan, what qualities do you admire most about your mother? Uh, I, one quality I'm, I admire most about her is she's, um, she always tells me to work smarter and not harder so she's very flexible and um, <laughs> she, she teaches me how to work um, smarter and she's very knowledgeable too. What's one thing that you'd like to do for your mother? One thing, let's start with Ryan first. This one. one thing I like to do for my mother is cook breakfast for her. I have done that before and I think she really likes it. Yeah. What's one thing you'd like to do for your mother? In the future, I'd probably like to buy my mom a house. I mean, I'd buy like, both my parents a house because like, they're married. But like, I'd buy, I'd buy my mom a house and like her dream home. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You want to check on it? Check on it. Okay, let's check on the steaks. All right, they're ready. So we're just gonna keep those going for another five minutes and then come back and baste them. And what I'm doing is I'm stirring in the butter and the mashed potatoes and making sure they have a nice consistency. So what I'll do next is add a little milk. just a little so they can have a nice creamy consistency. Like I said, there are supposed to be creamy smashed potatoes. And while Ryan is doing that, I'm going to start on the green beans. So I'm using frozen green beans, one bag. Uh, you can use whatever green beans you'd like, but I just chose frozen because they're easier. So I have my oven set to medium for the green beans and I'm just going to cook these until they're like not frozen anymore and then I'm going to add the better than bacon jam and the rest of the toppings. So while she's doing that, I'm adding, I just added the milk and it has a nice consistency so far. So next, I'll add uh, chives. You do, you do not have to do this. It's, it's not required, but I like a little chives in my mashed potatoes. And then I'll just stir. Just keep stirring. Can you discuss when you started cooking and why? Um, I started cooking when I was like six or seven. And I started cooking because I liked when my mom cooked and I wanted to learn how to like do the same stuff as she did. And Ryan, when did you start cooking and why? <laughs> I started cooking like, um, like back in probably 2019 because uh, I really started cooking breakfast because I, I wanted to learn on my own. But other than that, I mean, I don't really cook dinner that much. 
if I cook dinner, um, it's gonna be something small. One time I cooked meat love with my great grandmother. And what's your what's your favorite thing to cook, Ryan? My favorite thing to cook, well, like I said, I only cook breakfast, so pancakes. Pancakes. Kenya, what's your favorite thing to cook? Um, probably pasta. Pasta. Okay. Cool. Cool. While they're checking on the food, we're going to transition to our other part. We've talked about four mothers that you are aware of. Um, now we're going to transition and talk about some mothers that you may not be aware of, but they're coming out of the Bible. And uh, we're going to be going with the letters from the word motherly love. So um, I'll turn it over to Gregorio. He can go ahead and talk about the first one. Yes, sir. Thank you. The mm -hmm. first one is M for merciful. And in the book of Acts 9.36, there was a lady we were introduced to the name Tabitha, or she's also referred to as Dorcas. Tabitha was a very merciful woman. Um, she did a lot of great things for people who were in need and less fortunate. Uh, she would sow things for widows and, uh, and people. And she passed away. She lived in a town called Joppa, and she passed away suddenly. And one of Jesus' disciples by the name of Peter was in the city next door called Lydda, uh, Lydda. And they, the widows told Peter, hey, this lady passed away and she was such a great lady. She used to do all these wonderful, merciful acts towards us. And Peter was so moved by that, by their stories that he prayed to God uh, for Tabitha and she was resurrected back to life. So because of her merciful acts, she was her life was extended. Mm -hmm. And so if your mom is always out there helping other people and blessing other people, make sure you show her appreciation this Mother's Day because it takes a lot to not only take care of the family that she has, but also help other people, other person's families. Okay, the next one, O, is for organization. In Judges chapter four, verse four, we learn about a lady named Deborah. Although the Israelites were strong and powerful, and it was a group of Canaanites that uh, oppressed them for, decade, for decades, um, until they were able to call on the Lord and ask for help, God sent them uh, judges to Organize and lead them to uh, Deborah. Deborah was a, a female judge, and her, along with the commander, uh, a commander named Barak, um, and their 10,000 men, they were able to de defeat the army that was oppressing them um, and uh, lead them. The army that was a profess, pro excuse me, the army that was oppressing them. Um, throughout her organizational skills, it was uh, what really helped them to defeat the army. So, you know. You might be always getting on your mom because she's wanting you to, you know, stay organized. She's helping you be organized. But there's a reason that she's doing this. It's something that can help pay off for you later on in life. We're helping you be organized and helping you get through some uh, some 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 hard times. So um, organization is a great motherly quality and it's a quality that you maybe should try to pick up on yourself. All right. Thank you, sir. The T in uh, motherly love is for a teacher, which is a wonderful quality of great mothers. And one teacher that is in the Bible, her name was Jochebed. You may have not recognized that name right off the bat, but you know her son, because his name is Moses. He led his people out of Egypt to freedom. Jochebed, during that time, the king of Egypt decided, he put out an order to kill all of the sons, the firstborn sons of the people of Israel because he was scared. He was scared that they would outnumber them and probably join their enemies and overtake Egypt. So he said, kill them all. But Jochebed said, not my son. She put him in a basket, sailed him up the Nile River. And then the king of Egypt's daughter, they called him Pharaoh. Pharaoh's daughter found the basket. And then Moses' sister somehow talked the, the Pharaoh's daughter to use Pharaoh's mom to be his teacher. And so what happened is, Pharaoh's, uh, Moses' mom, Jochebed, was able to teach him who he was, even though he was being raised as an Egyptian. She taught him, you are a Hebrew, you are God's chosen people. And later on, because of that teaching to tell him who he was, he was able to come back. And the Lord used him in order to free the people out of bondage in Egypt. So if your mom is going against all odds and, and, and teaching you who you are, um, and your history and your past, listen to her because she knows what she's talking about. That's a wonderful quality to teach 
uh, who you are so you understand how uh, you can go through the world as, as who you are. <laughs> next, next, next uh, um, we'll talk about heart led. And uh, the person that we want to talk about, the lady name is Hannah. Um, the book of 1 Samuel tells us about a lady named Hannah. Hannah was childless. Uh, she prayed to God to, for God to give her a child. Um, she prayed an honest prayer. Um, and by that, God promised her that he would allow her to bear a son. She would devote her life to God. Um, God eventually allowed her to have a son, Samuel. And she was, uh, she was a woman of her word. So she left her son to be raised by the church. Um, this is another way of which her being heart led, um, just doing following what God told her to do. Uh, Samuel would go on to rescue Israel from centuries of slavery from the group um, of uh, Canaanites. Hannah's honest prayer and behavior ultimately led to, being, to Israel being rescued from slavery. Um, all the time, you know, in life, uh, we wonder and question, you know, some of the things that our mom does. Um, some of it we may not agree with, but what we don't know is the relationship that her and God have. They have a different relationship than the relationship that you and God have. She prays to different things to God than the things that you pray for. So when she's being heart led and she's being guided by uh, God to do these things, just uh, go along with her lead because ultimately our mothers are all heart. They uh, love us um, unconditionally. So um, that's, yeah, that's in the addition to, In addition to heart, mm -hmm. they are very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so E is for encouraging. And one of those people, one of those ladies in the Bible that was very encouraging to, especially to the early church and Paul was Priscilla. Priscilla can be found in Acts chapter 18. Her and her husband Aquila mentored a lot of the leaders in the early church when they really needed a lot of mentoring because they were being persecuted for what they believed. And so it says in eight, Acts 18, 24, Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So even Paul recognizes how uh, helpful Priscilla was and if that and many moms are just like that very encouraging even and, and when you try new things mom is right there to help you and encourage you even though you may mess up she's still there to encourage you to keep going forward so salute your mom if she's helping you and so what we'll do right now just take a quick pause and go back to the uh, back to the young people because they, they look like they're close to being finished so we'll go ahead and go back okay so the steaks are done. I'm going to take them off and put them on a cutting board. And then the steaks are gonna rest for like 10 minutes. And that's just to keep all the juices inside and keep it like a really juicy steak. So now I'm going to start the green beans. Well, like more like finish the green beans. So the green beans are good and I'm going to add the better than bacon jam. Just half the jar. So half a jar of better than bacon jam. And let that cook. While she's doing that, I added my chives to the mashed potatoes. So now I will be adding the parsley, give it a little bit more flavor and taste. Again, it's not required. Now you may be wondering how many potatoes did I use? I only use eight uh, today, but you can use how many as you want. And uh, you don't have to add all these extra things but it's, um, if you want extra taste, you can. Next, I'll add, I'll add my cheese and give it just a little bit more flavor. What's the best part of cooking? The best part of cooking is um, probably when you're making it, 
or eating it. Kenya, what do you say is the best part of cooking? Um, the eating part. <laughs> Or you get to eat it because there's no like there's no point in cooking it if you're not going to eat it <laughs> yes ma'am but i took the green beans off the stove so okay. now they're done okay awesome there's your plate and do you cook for yourself or your family and if so how often um uh, not often not after i don't cook uh, if I cook, I'm putting a frozen chicken patty in the toaster oven. But if I do cook, it's breakfast or a breakfast quesadilla or a breakfast taco. So, so is it safe to say you might need to start cooking a little bit more? <laughs> Dad, especially. And mom? <laughs> yeah, yes. We can say that. <laughs> hey, Kenya, do you cook for yourself or your family? And if so, how often? I cook for myself a lot, but those are just like tiny snacks. And I cook for my family like most of the time because we do this rotating thing where everybody cooks one day and I'm Tuesdays, so I make dinner on Tuesdays. Okay. And right now I am ready to add the craisins. So you're just gonna add those in and the crushed almonds. Okay, we're gonna pick back up and uh, we're gonna start back with uh, the R for respectful. In Exodus 1, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, commanded the midwives, uh, Sarah and Putin, to, um, to kill all the Hebrew boys, as uh, Brother Gregorio was saying earlier. Um, he did this because he feared the nation was going, growing too fast and if they united with Egypt's army, they could defeat Egypt. Um, the Bible, uh, the book of Exodus, Chapter one, verse 17, but um, Sarah, 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 and oh, Shipra, Puh, Shipra. Shipra and Puhan had respect for God. They didn't want, they did, they did what God, they didn't do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let one of the boys live. And uh, because of this, um, because of their respect for God, um, it committed this early act of civil disobedience, but it saved many kids' life. So um, all the time when, um, when you're thinking of some things and you're not thinking that um, you don't necessarily want to follow the, the directions or whatnot, you have to always remain to be respectful. Um, respect will get you a lot of places. And I know, you know a lot of our mothers, uh, that's one of the things that they always try to instill in us is respect. Um, respect goes a long way. Um, respect will take you to avenues and uh, down streets that normally you may not be able to get in just by granting a person respect. Um, so just, just, just keep that in mind. Uh, be very respectful. Be respectful of your mother and uh, respectful of those around you. The L coming up is for loving, which you already know, of course, because this is all about a love for mothers. But one of the mothers, that, or one lady within the Bible that showed a lot of love is Esther, 470 years before Christ. Israel was defeated and enslaved by a group called uh, Babylonians. And then Babylonians were defeated and enslaved by a group called the Persians. And so what happened is the king of the Persians, his name was Xerxes, he took Esther as a wife. She was from the, the God's people, Israel, and he took her as a wife. And even though she was his wife, she was still, she still had love for her people. And so the second in command under the king of Persia, his name was Haman. He was he didn't like Israel, so he was trying to kill them all off. And Esther had actually saved the king's life by telling him about a plot that was, you know, his people were trying to go against him. So he had a lot of favor. She had a lot of favor with him. But in order to approach the king, you didn't just walk up on the king back in the days. If you walked up on him unannounced, most of the time you you die. But Esther, she created this big feast for him, walked up on him and said, listen, this guy is trying to kill not only my our people, my people, but he's trying to kill me. And so she, uh, the king listened to his wife who was very loving of her people and risked her life for her, her family, basically, her, her, you know, the Hebrew family and he stopped Haman's plans. And she was able to basically save her whole people by, because of the love that she had. So moms sometimes put themselves in harm's way for you. 
as the youth and put, their har put, and put themselves in harm's way for their friends and their families. And for that type of mom, we salute you and make sure that you, again, salute your mom for that. Yes. Um, the next one is why for yield to God. Elizabeth, the wife of a priest named Zachariah, was considered by righteous to consider to be righteous and blameless, according to Luke one, one six. She didn't, she couldn't have children. So when she finally be, became pregnant, she knew that it was the Lord's favor, um, based based also upon her older age. She never questioned why, but she just praised God. Six months after she became pregnant, her co her cousin Mary, Jesus' mother, became pregnant through the Holy Spirit as well. Elizabeth yielded to God as he used her to comfort and encourage Mary, Mary, and Mary went through the miraculous pregnancy. Um, a lot of times we may not understand why uh, God does things, but uh, we have to yield to his will and his way. Um, the same with our mom. We might not understand why she does things or tells us to do things, but we have to yield to her will and her way. So that's... Uh, pretty much how that goes. Yes, sir. All right. The next L is for, uh, which is again, qualities of wonderful moms is loyal, loyalty. And in the Bible, there is one woman that is very, very loyal. Her name is Ruth. There's a book written after her, just like the last lady that I mentioned, Esther. Ruth also has a book. Ruth was a Mo uh, from the Moabite uh, people. So they didn't necessarily, her background is not people that were chosen like God's people, Israel. Naomi, her mother-in-law, lost her husband and her son, which is Ruth's husband. And Ruth, instead of saying, okay, I really don't have a connection to you anymore. You know, you know, my, your son, my husband died. So I could go my, I'll go our separate ways. She put down one of the most famous quotes in the Bible in Ruth one and six. And it said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from you from following you for where you go. I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. So that is loyalty. She and, and Naomi ended up going to Bethlehem and they worked for a man named Boaz. And Boaz, because Ruth was so uh, powerful and so awesome, um, they met, they fell in love and, you know, live happily ever after, so to speak. But because of her loyalty, he saw that loyalty in her and he respected that and that elevated her in terms of status, in terms of this is someone that I definitely want to marry. And many of you moms are loyal your, uh, to your families. No matter what's going on, you will back that child up no matter what, and because that's your baby. And so we, we appreciate that and make sure you who are cooking, tell your mom you appreciate her for that. Yes. The next one we want to talk about is obedience. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a wonderful, wonderful example of total obedience to the will of God. Uh, an angel told her that she may become the mother of the Savior through the Holy Spirit. Despite um, any concerns she might have, um, she still was obedient to God. During her life, she experienced a lot of grief because of what happened to Jesus. Um, she also uh, knew how much of a blessing Jesus was to the world, yet she also witnessed how the world mistreated him betrayed him and even crucified him. Mary was Mary like a wonderful mother didn't di didn't get discouraged and uh, didn't let the heartbreaking situation stop her from obeying God's God's word and uh, being a servant to him. So just want to you know remain obedient to our mothers um, in the same manner in which Mary was obedient to God. And the V uh, stands for being valiant and brave. Takes a lot of bravery to be a parent nowadays. And so one of the wonderful women of the Bible that showed a lot of uh, bravery and valiant is Abigail. In 1 Samuel 25 is where you're introduced to Abigail. Abigail was very smart, very graceful, and she was married to a man by the name of Nabal who was uh, wealthy, but he wasn't a nice guy. So David, the same David that became the king of Israel, um, his men would constantly save uh, Nabal's and Ab Abel's shepherds. So they would take care of their land and, and protect it. But Nabal, Nabal, Nabal didn't know that. And so when David's men came, like 400 of them, they came to him and they said, hey, we've been, you know, taking care of your land for you, making sure you guys are safe. Can we get something, you know, like something to eat maybe? 
And he's, not only did he say no, he was mean to him. And so they took the word back to David, said, this is what this guy's doing. David said, oh, that's just disrespectful and unappreciative. We're going to kill him. And so they were on the way to actually kill these guys. And Abigail stopped them along the way, you know, got in their path, 400 men, and offered them food and offered them stuff and was able to be diplomatic and calm them down from going and killing her husband. And that's a lot of bravery. Again, she's put herself in harm's way for her kids, for her kids, for her husband, just like many moms put themselves in harm's way for their, for their children. So again, we salute you moms that have that valiance. Okay, last we're gonna talk about um, engaging, um, being engaged. And uh, we'll go a little bit off script, but uh, we just wanna um, make sure that, you know, just like your mother is always engaged in all your activities, uh, everything that you do, she's engaged in your schoolwork, your, um, you, what you want to be when you grow up. Um, she's engaged in your attire. She's engaged in your safety. She's engaged in all of these things your mother is. And uh, we just want to make sure that the same engagement that your mother gives you and that um, you know, mothers give the same engagement to God, that you give that engagement to your mother. Um, without your mother, you wouldn't be in here. Without her being engaged to you, you wouldn't be here. So show that engagement back to your mother as well. So just wanted to, you know, make sure that you stay engaged with your mom, especially on this day. Engage her with this nice meal that we're about to engage him with. So um, with that being said, we've covered motherly love and uh, we want to get back into the, the cooking session and uh, we're going to start to get everything prepared for the mothers. All right. Well, this is the final product of my mashed potatoes. You can see that it has the chives, parsley, obviously the potatoes and the cheese. And this is the final product of the green beans. It has the better than bacon jam, the raisin, the craisins, and the sliced almonds. So we're ready to plate. Feel free. Just put it on. Can you grab that? Yeah, you can grab it. Grab it. This looks wonderful. <laughs> smells good. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, these mashed potatoes are awesome, Brian. Thank you. Good job, thank you. Thank you. you uh, Elmo's culinary. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll present it to your parents. Yeah, and I'll let you go. Take it home. Aww. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Aww. Day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this looks delicious. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> We're not done. We have a little something oh. else for both you wonderful mothers on this Mother's Day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you guys. Oh, thank Happy you. Happy Mother's thank Day. You. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, y'all come over here. We just kind of, or, or kind of around them. Just in uh, closing up today, we just, um, hold that please. We just uh, wanted to make sure that the mothers uh, felt uh, loved and appreciated. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed the, uh, the lesson that we went over today and uh, some of the qualities that the mothers exude. And uh, we just wanted to show our appreciation to our mothers, our love, our gratitude. Um, we aren't able to show it as deeply as we like, but uh, hopefully this is just a token of our love and uh, more to come. We'll continue to love on them for the rest of the weekend. And I have one other thing on my paperwork here. I want to get out some thank yous oh, because yes, there are some wonderful people. And so, first of all, to some of the wonderful mothers who help within uh, the ministry. I want to make sure that uh, we want to make sure that they um, they get their credit as well. We got Gail McGill, Dorothy Pillow, Donica Ivy, Jelena Perkin, 
Happy birthday, Jordan, by the way. Gwen Rice, Gwen Thompson, Joy Armand, Autumn Balkum, uh, Alexis Garcia, Tamika Felder, Andrea Roverson. Am I missing anybody? Um, if, if, if we are did, missing anybody, charge it to our minds, not our hearts. Um, and this wonderful media ministry, Marcus Lloyd, Nick Moore, Brittany Johnson, thank you so much for putting this together. We know it is not an easy task, but you guys are awesome. So we thank you very much. And again, to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Yes. And On behalf of the Resurrection Baptist Church. Yes. Thank you.